What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Big Fight Fuel channel, where we speak the truth, we're honest, and we give our takes on AEW. It is Wednesday night, February 8th, 2023. Riding solo tonight for the Dynamite Review. Crazy episode, to say the least, man. Um, there was a lot. That happened um, in tonight's episode, building towards revolutions. It was mostly championship night. There were two world eliminator title matches and two actual championship matches. But my goodness, if you love watching some good wrestling matches... Like, straight-on wrestling matches. Tonight was your night. Tonight was your night for sure, man. Because we got three outstanding matches tonight, man. Excellent wrestling. MJF and Takeshka to kick off the show. Roosh and Brian Danielson, where if Brian Danielson won, Roosh was the last opponent he had to go through in order to get to MJF. At Revolution, and then the trios tag title match between Top Flight and AR Fox against the Elite was just absolutely wild, man. And wrestling is really doing some great things right now, and you love to see it. AEW is doing really good, and WWE, in my opinion, is white hot right now. They have been, they have not, in my opinion, WWE little off track here, but in my opinion, WWE hasn't been this hot since Kofi Mania, and that's a very long time. That's almost four years heading into WrestleMania 35, and you got your two cup of teas, it feels like, when it comes to AEW and WWE. If you love wrestling, and you love professional wrestling, and some great wrestling, you 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 got it on AEW because every single week, man, AEW. I don't mean to steal this from Sheamus, but every week AEW is giving you banger after banger after banger after banger. Brian Danielson tonight against Roosh. Right now, match of the year, man. Match of the year, Brian Danielson versus Roosh tonight. And then on WWE, some real emotional. Storylines driven, storyline driven show with some great feuds going on. Sami Zayn and the Bloodline with Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns happening at the Elimination Chamber. You now started Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns a promo segment between Cody Rhodes and Paul Heyman on Monday night. You got the stuff going on with Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley, which I think is really good. Um, Rey Mysterio and Dominic. There's a lot of good storylines going on in WWE right now. So you got your wrestling with AEW and you got your storylines with WWE. And I think it's amazing, man. I think wrestling is really hot right now. And that makes me extremely happy uh, that wrestling's hot because... You know, I didn't feel that for a certain period of time where it just felt like, you know, I didn't really care much about wrestling. But now, it's like football's over and wrestling is really good. AEW so far, first six weeks, I think have been very good for AEW. And for WWE, I think the same thing. I think WWE is doing really good so far this year. So, so far, in 2023, man, wrestling is thriving. So... Tonight, we're going to talk about AEW. We got Dynamite live from El Paso, Texas. Incredible crowd, man. Texas is always a great site for AEW. Um, shout out to El Paso, Texas for being a great crowd tonight. Um, before we get into the Dynamite review, if you haven't already, uh, be sure to go ahead and check out my vlog from Monday Night Raw this past Monday. I decided last minute to go attend Monday Night Raw at the Amway Center. 
it's only a 15 minute drive from my house and it was only a uh it was a $40 ticket, so um, I figured, you know what, why not go up to the Amway Center, go watch some Monday Night Raw in person, and I thought it was a very good, a very fun show Monday night. So if you haven't already, um, be sure to go ahead and check out that review. We're, we're approaching uh, 150 viewers for, um, for that review, and subscribe to the channel, man. We are 13 subs away from 500 subscribers on the Big Fight Fuel channel. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for when I get to 500 subscribers on the channel, but I'll think of something pretty big. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And without further ado, man, let's get into Dynamite. And the opening match was the match I was looking forward to the most tonight, which was MJF. Against Kanosuke Takeshka. I think with the record Takeshka had. I don't think he might, might have lost one match. With Brian Danielson this year. You could have made this a world title match. That's just my opinion. But they made it a world title eliminator. Where if Takeshka defeated uh, MJF. He would get a shot at the world championship. Next week on Dynamite. That did not happen. An excellent match. 15 minutes they gave these guys to open up Dynamite. And they killed it. I think if anybody's hating on MJF as a wrestler, they're just in straight denial. I mean, they're just, a, a, they're, they're just an MJF hater. We all know how great he is on the microphone. How much personality he has. Probably one of, if not the best promo in the business. But... He is a fantastic professional wrestler as well. In the ring, he is crisp. He is sharp. He is really fucking good in the ring, man. And he's gotten a lot better over the years in AEW. And if you're not giving him his props, you're just in straight denial. And you're just you're just hating on MJF. Um, as for Takeshka, he's the future. Um, they, we've seen him in... Big matchups in AEW. John Moxley, Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson, uh, Claudio Casignoli, MJF tonight. And what's so key about this run for Takeshka in AEW and this push that he's getting is AEW is not keeping him off television. Like after a loss to Brian Danielson, you know, he gains Brian Danielson's respect. And Brian Danielson gains his respect. And they got each other's back. And this is keeping Takeshka on television. It gets him a lot of more TV time. Because he's actually playing a role in the biggest feud going on in AEW right now. Between MJF and Brian Danielson. Which was a very... Tonight was a very heavy MJF, Brian Danielson show. But I love everything that they did with the MJF Danielson feud tonight. This was the first step. MJF versus Takeshka was an outstanding match. The target the entire time was Takeshka's arm. Seems to be the feud uh, the theme for this feud as MJF has been wanting his opponents to rip off the arm of Brian Danielson. Not really rip off, but target the arm of Brian Danielson and and uh and MJF does that to Kanosuke Takeshka tonight. Really damages the arm of his. So that at the end of the match, MJF's got the salt on the earth. Locked in. Lock, he's got it locked in pretty deep on Takeshka. And T Takeshka had no choice but to tap out. And then after the match, MJF shoving referee Paul Turner to give Kanosuke Takeshka the dynamite diamond ring. Brian Danielson comes out. MJF limps to the ramp to sell his knee injury. And, and Takeshka is busted open. So this was an excellent match. This was yet another. Um, you can add this one on the list of fantastic matches that Takeshka has had 
in AEW. And if I'm Tony Khan, man, I'm booking Kanosuke. I don't know what Orange Cassidy is doing right now. He really hasn't been on television in the past couple weeks. I don't know if he's dealing with an injury or anything, but if I'm Tony Khan, I'm booking I'm booking Takeshka against Orange Cassidy for the buy-in, and I'm putting Takeshka over winning the All Atlantic Championship over Orange Cassidy. So um, we'll see where that goes. But we got more of this uh, of this feud to talk about um, with MJF and Danielson. We had the Bunny against Jamie Hader. You know, if the Bunny won, she would get a shot at the at the women's championship next week. Um, Jamie Hader, Britt Baker, Rebel, they all came out of the babyface tunnel. It seems like it's basically all but confirmed at this point that they have turned face and Soraya and Tony Storm, uh, they turned heel. Uh, Jamie Hader easily won this match in seven seconds after the Hader Raid, which is her finisher. I think that's a really cool name. And, um, she pins the bunny in seven minutes. Then, after the match, there's a backstage promo with Soraya and Tony Storm. And they're picking on poor Leva Bates. They drop her and they spray tame the letter L on the back of her shirt. Um, I'm digging. I'm digging Soraya and Tony Storm as heels because honestly. No one's going to cheer for Jamie. I think the direction they're going for is Soraya challenging Jamie Hayter for the Women's Championship at Revolution. That's just my prediction. But um, uh, no one's going to cheer for Soraya over Jamie Hayter if that match happens at Revolution. So the smart thing to do for the long term and for this was to turn Soraya and Tony Storm heel. And I think it's working. And it gives all these women something to do um, in this big feud with the with the originals versus the outsiders. And I think it's going to work, man. I hope it does. Because the AEW women's division needed a spark. And I think this could be the spark for them. So we'll see. Backstage interview. This was the only non-wrestling the only non-wrestling match segment that we got on the show tonight. A backstage interview with MJF, kind of a promo. And he talked about how Danielson doesn't have the guts, he doesn't have the championship mindset in him to win a world title in AEW. And then he explains a story, and this is wild. So he's in high school, and when he first driving, he goes over the speed limit, he's whipping his car 90 miles an hour, gets pulled over three times. One more point, and his license is taken away. So this is Junior Prom, I believe MJF said. And he's pulling up to the... Uh, he's pulling up to the Junior Prom with his boys from the football team. And he sees this girl, and her name... He said, we'll call it appropriately. We'll call her Liv. And she sees Liv and they're dancing. And he's like, Liv, you want to take a whip around my car? And they go for a drive and they're driving. And once again, MJF is going 90 miles an hour. Can't control the wheel. And they run into a telephone pole. He wakes up. He feels concussed. He has no idea where he is. He sees Sweet Liv um, with her head through the uh, through his windshield. He's still she's still breathing after he puts his fingers underneath his nose, and as he hears the cop sirens, he puts Liv in the driver's seat while he sits in the passenger seat. To make it look like it wasn't him. Absolutely wild, man. That is a that is a wild fucking story, man. But just a fantastic promo by MJF. But I love the way I love the way Tony Schiavone sold this on commentary because he was like, he's like, not only is 
He's like, not only is MJF the worst human being in AEW, but he's the worst human being in the world, too. I just laughed my ass off. I found that to be extremely funny. Um, we had the Garcia Guevara gauntlet match where the rule was Ricky would have to face both members of 2.0, which he beat both of them in about three minutes. And then he would have to face either Daniel Garcia or Sammy Guevara. And he ended up facing Garcia, but they tr they kind of confused him with both of them coming out. And he ended up facing Daniel Garcia. And during the match, a guy in a mask wearing a Scissor Me Daddy ass shirt gave Ricky Starks a spinning back elbow. And Garcia throws Ricky Starks in the ring. And he pins him, and the guy walks in the ring, and it's Chris Jericho. So, Ricky Starks does not face Chris Jericho, because the rule was, if Ricky Starks got through three members of the Jericho Appreciation Society, that he would face Chris Jericho uh, that same night. Ricky Starks doesn't beat the gauntlet to get to Jericho. He loses to Daniel Garcia, thanks to Jericho. And I, I just, I don't, I don't have much interest in this feud, man. I don't know what it is. I love Chris Jericho, but this feud is not interesting to me. And I really don't know what these guys are fighting over. It's like Chris Jericho lost to him the first episode of the year. And he's, he's wanting to get rid of him. Obviously... If I had to guess, the whole point of this feud is to get Ricky Starks to that main event le level. Because he's, he's got that talent. He's a great talent, for sure. But he's not at that level yet. And I'm sure Chris Jericho probably wants to put him over. So, I mean, he's probably going to put him over again at Revolution. But... I don't know. I, I just I just don't have much interest in this feud between Ricky Starks and Jericho. That's just the way I feel about it. Um But what I do have interest in is Brian Danielson against Roosh. And this was easily the best thing on the show tonight. Easily. And not only the match itself, but the way it was booked. So, Renee was interviewing Danielson in the trainer room with Takeshka there. Someone runs by the door, closes it, and locks the door. So, Roosh makes his entrance. MJF goes out there, and he tells Aubrey Edwards, Brian Danielson's not here. Start counting to 10. And props to Aubrey Edwards, because... She was counting as slow as possible. She was like, one, two, really slow. So she got to six, and Brian Danielson came out. MJF is livid. He goes off to the commentary. Brian Danielson runs his body into the door, and Roosh is just kicking his ass, man. He's got a steel chair against... Danielson's head, a uh, missile drop kick to the barricade with Danielson holding on to the chair, and Danielson's bleeding all over the place. This was one of the best hard hitting physical matches I've seen in a very long time from AEW. This is so far. As of February 8th, 2023, this has been the best wrestling match I've seen this year. This was this was a masterclass by Brian Danielson and Roosh. Basically, just the way the whole thing was built. Both guys were absolutely beating the shit out of each other. Roosh was this close numerous times to defeating Danielson 
And the stakes were extremely high because if Danielson loses, he doesn't get the revolution. Excuse me. He doesn't get the revolution. He doesn't get to the 60-minute Iron Man match that he's wanted for months now. Um, so they're absolutely beating the shit out of each other. If you didn't watch this match, I advise you, 20 minutes of your day, go watch Brian Danielson versus Roosh. This was a master class. Roosh, he, he props to him too. He is outstanding. He's licking the blood of Brian Danielson that's on his hand, um, tasting Brian Danielson's blood. Um, and he is just fantastic, man. He needs to be, he'll, he, he'll hopefully be a champion in AEW at some point, whether that's the All Atlantic champion, the TNT champion, uh, the Trios champions with LFI. Um, but he, he is just outstanding, man. And it's a shame Andrade's not there. He's out nine months with the tour peck, but Roosh is doing a really nice job without him, man. And he show how great he really is, man. And I think AEW, uh, with that signing did a, did, did a great job, um, bringing him in Roosh because he's proven that he is phenomenal in that ring. Kicked out of Brian Danielson's psycho knee. Then he escaped a label lock. Hit his own finisher that Danielson kicked out of. And these guys are absolutely chopping the shit out of each other. Danielson's chest was like a tomato. And then Roosh goes for one more missile drop kick toward the corner. Danielson hits his second psycho knee. And he pins Roosh. And after the match, MJF goes out to the ring and he hits Danielson with the dynamite diamond ring. Um, he's basically 50% unconscious, 50% cautious because of all the blood that was rushing down his face from this match with Roosh. And he's got the uh, salt of the earth on and security guards and agents and officials are trying to get MJF off of Danielson. So it's official, man. MJF defending the world championship against Brian Danielson at Revolution in a 60-minute Iron Man match. But once again, props to Brian Danielson, props to Roosh for the for the masterclass that they put on, and props to Tony Khan for the way this match was booked too. Outstanding. Um, my match of the year so far. I know it's early. Something will probably beat that, but so far, Brian Danielson versus Roosh is my match of the year. Um, we go from one outstanding match to another, and I mean, this match was just wild. Um, Top Flight and AR Fox against the Elite for the ta for the trios tag team titles, and I mean. It's just wild, nonstop action, man. AR Fox was very impressive. Nearly defeated Kenny Omega. Nearly pinned Kenny Omega to win his team, the Trios Tag Team Championships. But at the end, with the roll-up finish, Omega barely beats Top Flight and AR Fox. But this match was absolutely wild. Again, another match that you guys have to go out and check. If you didn't watch it. Tonight was all about the wrestling. We got three outstanding matches. From AEW. And then the main event. We had the acclaimed. Defending the AEW Tag Team Championships. Against Austin and Colton Gunn. The story of this match. Was the confliction of Billy Gunn. Because he's with the acclaimed. As daddy ass. But yet. His sons. The Guns. Uh, trying to take them down. And he's in the middle of this. And he's earlier in the night. He's like you know what. I have sympathy for my sons. And I love you guys too. But tonight I'm going to stay in the back. 
So obviously when he said that, I'm like, okay, because there's uh, there's going to be a way that he gets involved in the match. There's going to be a ref bump, but he might turn on the acclaim. There was a ref, there was a ref bump. But he did not turn on the acclaimed. Austin saw the referee down, took the AEW tag team title, was about to hit Anthony Bowens with it, and um, and what and uh, um, my tr- lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? He's about to hit Anthony Bowens with it, but Billy came down and stopped him. And he took the tag team title belt and he put it away. He threw it to the ground. And then Colton took that same exact belt and he hit he hit his dad with that with that belt. So that that's the end of Billy. Billy is knocked out from the match after Colton hits his dad with the tag team title. And then um and then uh, the acclaim, they do their signature. Max Caster goes for the mic drop. There's no referee. Uh, so they go to get their referee. And, you know, Austin Gunn kicked out at two. Um, referee still down, unconscious. Max Caster's taken out. Anthony Bowens is goes against the ropes. He's hit. By the tag team title belt by... There's a fucking fly around here, man. Jesus Christ. Sorry. I, I apologize with my language. Anyway. Colton Gunn hits uh, Anthony Bowens with the tag team title belt. Austin Gunn rolls him up. And the Guns are the new AEW tag team champions. El Paso, Texas was pissed off with this result. Uh, the Guns are the new AEW Tag Team Champions. The Acclaimed are no longer the Tag Team Champions. However, they still have Billy on their side. And I'm sure there will be a rematch for the Tag Team titles at Revolution. But guys, it was a really good show tonight. Excellent, excellent wrestling. A wild night with three tremendous matches. The opening match with MJF and Takeshka was excellent. Brian Danielson versus Roosh was a master class. And the, and the trio's tag title match was freaking wild, man. So I'm getting out of here. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Big Fight Field channel. Hit the bell for all notifications. I'm going to drop a Super Bowl preview prediction video either tomorrow night or Friday. I'll let you guys know on Twitter. Um, Comment down below your thoughts about tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. Hit the like button if you like what you heard from me. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok at Colin underscore Joseph. And I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Stay safe. And as always, stay classy. I'm out. Peace.